Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today I am playing a donation deck to play a Bant Beanstalk deck with a little bit of spice in the form of Plow Under. So the Beanstalk decks are a pretty known quantity these days. Essentially we use up the Beanstalk alongside things like Solitude, Merkside Regent and Force of Will to draw a bunch of cards and just sort of trade a bunch of one for ones and then just sort of accelerate out. This deck also has some other card advantage in the form of Life from the Loan, buying back Wastelands or just our Fetchlands, which we can then brainstorm away or reuse. And when we get high enough in our land count, we can do things with Field of the Dead. We also have an Uro, which is, you know, card advantage and a win condition. Stabilizes you with a life gain. Big fan of this one. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We've got the things you'd expect. So we've got the cantrips. We've got the counter spells. We've got a bunch of removal, including one Supreme Verdict. We do have a Mystic Sanctuary in the land, so we can go and get back one of our, like, one of Supreme Verdict or whatever. Or we can start being really griefy and looping Plow Under. So Plow Under is going to draw us a card and basically set our opponent back two lands, potentially two whole turns if they can't shuffle those lands away. And they're not doing anything with that mana. So this can be really backbreaking. It's a bit of a blast from the past that you like to jam people up within cube, so it's pretty fun to have here. I believe Bosch and Roll played this video on their channel, uh, played this deck on their channel. So if I can find the link to that, I will put it in the description as well, so you can have a watch of them playing this. They're obviously a better band control player than I am, but I'm going to do my best today. Sideboard-wise, we've just got a selection of tools that you kind of would expect to see. You know, we've got some Graveyard Hate, we've got another Finisher if we need it, we've got some more Graveyard Hate that also doubles up as Natural Order type Hate and Green Sun Zenith Hate, some Destruction for Artifacts and stuff like that. Also, Blood Moons could be a bit of a problem for us sometimes, so being able to hit that is important. A little bit of anti-combo stuff and Deafening Silence and some more counter spells, And some Damping Sphere for, you know, similar sorts of things, really. We will have to be careful fetching our lands if we're trying to both work towards Field of the Dead as well as getting our Mystic Sanctuary online. So we'll see how we fare there. Let's just put all our basics together in one pile so we know what we're working with. One of each basic. And then two Tundras, one Trop, one Savannah. And then we've got the Ketria Triome here which we can use to get an additional colour for our prismatic endings if we need to. Alright, without further ado, remember to like and subscribe, and let's play some Plow Under Beanstalk. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use, and I've found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past, so why not give them a try? Alright, Island Ponder, we've got a bit of removal that we can eventually get to, we've got some card advantage engines, this seems fine. We only have four Force of Will, so we're not trying to find them in our openers very often. Uh, white is our removal colour. We have to make some decisions about what we're fetching here. I think we're going to play on basics to begin with anyway. If we can just find one more fetch land, then we, we should be alright. Let's go and get the basic island here and cast a ponder. Alright, Brainstorm, Field of the Dead. I'm not massively into these. I don't mind having the additional land, but I think we're probably... Better off just doing it in any order and shuffling here. Alright, another Brainstorm is fine. So we can Brainstorm next turn or we can try and get the Beans down. If we draw a white card, we're more likely to want to get the Beans down. Also depends what our opponent plays and whether or not that's going to be a thing we want. Alright, so we could be looking at a Daze or an Entomb coming from our opponent's side. So these are definitely things we're going to be wanting to deal with here. Alright, then we play out our fetch land. I think I am... I just want to get the Beans down now. Well, this does play into a daze potentially is the only issue. Alright, I'm going to brainstorm and play around the days. I think. We want to get brainstorms out of our hand before our opponent has Orcish Bowmaster's mana, ideally. Or at least get one of them out and get that selection going. I'm happy to trade this brainstorm in for another land. Alright, my cup runneth over with brainstorms. Okay. So, we can't fetch an unwasteable white source here. We do want to fetch around potential stifle, so I guess we're going to go to our opponent's turn and see if they can use this underground sea for something. There is the entomb. Right, so we'll crack this now. And I think I'd still want the forest. No, we need we needed the trop here, right? So that we can brainstorm. Let's have a look. Alright, they're dazing this, that's fine. It's not great for us, obviously, but it means we're not getting our solitude days when they pull in their attractor. Okay, so we can remove this though. 
So that is something going for us. We can do it in response to the trigger on it. The other, so if we kill this now, we're more likely for it to resolve, but we don't get the extra value here. But I don't, I don't think we're in a position to be quibbling over that extra value here. Have they got a, okay, they do not have the days here. So we do get to clean up the attractor. So we're not under any pressure just yet. So what has our opponent got here? A whole bunch of things. Grief, Underground Sea, Force of Will, Ponder. Four cards. Not bad. So they're going to have to go to discard and lose two of these. Obviously they can lose other cards from their hand too. Oh no, we're just getting griefed here. Okay, so we're going to lose our Beanstalk. They pitched an Orcish Bowmasters, which is interesting. That might mean they've got multiple Bowmasters. That feels like a very good card in this sort of matchup. All right. So now we just have to play this game. All right, let's go and get ourselves a Tundra. Let's cast this Life from the Loam. That means that we're not going to get waste sand out of this game if this resolves. All right, uh, we've got a load of cards in hand, so Brainstorms off the top could be good. Obviously, we did shuffle a couple of Brainstorms in because we didn't want four Brainstorms earlier. So we just need to draw a little bit more action here. We can just start dredging the Life from the Loam and working towards... Field of the Dead and Uro. We do have three Uro to dredge to, but Life of the Malone isn't very impactful now. A Troll of Khazadun. So we have to make some decisions here. We can, I guess if we can dredge, we then have access to the Mystic Sanctuary next turn. So maybe that's worth dredging now. I think that's worth doing. Like Uro or something we can put back on top, that's fine. Okay. Neither of those things happened. So we can go and get a Mystic Sanctuary if we want it here. Uh, I think we might as well. We don't want to... If we crack this with Mystic Sanctuary, we can put a Ponder on top. That's probably all right. Let's get this Ponder. Or oh, we, we want to Brainstorm, actually. We've got loads of cards to shuffle away. That makes more sense. So we're going to take a hit from our opponent here. But we're going to have... A full grip. It's going to be mostly lands, but lands plus brainstorm is not too shabby. We get to change up some of these cards. Now, an Orchard Bay Masters is obviously going to be a bit of a pain for us. There's not much we can do about that. Take this hit. They did throw away one Bay Masters earlier, which kind of makes me think they've got more. Also, they might just counterspell our brainstorm, and that's going to be a problem for us too. We don't have a lot of time left. So we can try this brainstorm. If that doesn't work, we can try the hedge maze. And then we have one more turn where we need to find like a plow or a solitude. All right, let's draw our brainstorm. Let's cast our brainstorm into their bowmasters and lose the game. All right, we did not cast it into a bowmasters. Okay, so we're putting two of these cards away. And we'll get rid of the hedge mage and fetch land. Play fetch land. I'd very much like some more white mana because that's our removal color. So let's go and get another tundra here. Cast another brainstorm. Uh, these cards do not assist us right now. So I guess we're putting back. Are we in the market for wastelands right now? Don't feel like we are. Is that better than having another fetch? So we don't get to shuffle here, but we can dredge this life from the loam. If we want to get this beanstalk down now to be mana efficient, that's also fine. Um, do you want to dredge this? We're going to dredge it anyway, I suppose. Sure. Mm. So that's cleared the cards for next turn. So we get a fresh draw next turn. We need to not die this turn cycle and hopefully find something good the turn after. Right, so our opponent's got two under city sewers in their deck by the looks of things. They left a card on top. That's probably terrible news for us. Yep, so we're going to go to three on this attack. We've got a bunch of draws that do stuff for us here. But we do need to get through this force of will that's been sat in our opponent's hand for ages. Right, a wasteland, we don't care about that one. We can take us off of white white, I suppose, but then we have the Misty. Alright, so we didn't draw anything of merit here, so we are dead. Yep. That was not the way, was it? Alright, let's go to Cyborg Town. Let's see what we're looking with. So we want some ways of messing with our opponent's graveyard. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing. So these cards are pretty good at doing that. What 
doesn't look great here. Plow Wonder is quite expensive, and it's not really about that, I don't think, in this matchup. So if we remove these, we've got Life from the Loam going. Solitude's obviously excellent here. Force of Will is kind of like a necessity. Prismatic Endings don't feel great here. They do kill Bowmasters is the only issue, and we do want to deal with Bowmasters. So maybe we're incentivized to keep these. But something's got to give here. Is it the Beanstalk's just bad against all the Bowmaster shenanigans? That seems weird if that's how we're going to approach this one. But I'd rather have a grip full of like Uros and things than Beanstalks. But if we're getting rid of the Beanstalks, our endurances are less likely to resolve, uh, less likely to be able to pitch cast anyway. Paradox Zone is also an interesting one that we can just play and win the game, but five mana is probably a bit much. I think we do need Force of Wills. We probably do want our Beanstalks here. Maybe we're just trimming a couple of Ponders. We don't want to be wasting our time cantripping away. Maybe we trim one Force of Will. Because they're just not great against our opponent's grief strategies. I would like to have more removal here. So where we're running the Plow under that, we could be running something like Leyline Binding or whatever. Alright, this hand seems acceptable to me. <clears throat> I think we're going to showcase exactly why the... Force of Will is not going to be good in this matchup, but uh, you never know. Because they just have the front side of Grief, then your Force of Will is irrelevant. But if they're going for the Entomb plan, which is the scarier plan, to be honest. Right, let's get this down. There are some uh, people digging up the road outside my house. I hope you can't hear that on the mic, but if you can, I apologise. So we're going to go and get a Hedge Mage now. Hedge Maze. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, get that free value. Uh, Life from Alone, that's where you belong, so you get in there. I will not be drawing this. Alright, so let's... I think we're going to go for a Beanstalk. We can force a ball to protect this if we need to. Okay, we don't need to, that's good news. Uh, we will not replacement draw this. We have another land drop in hand already. We can wait till we've cracked this fetch, and then we can worry about doing Life from Alone stuff. Right, they're cycling a troll of Kazadun. That's not a particularly scary one. We already have the surgical as well, which we can do some work with. Right, ponder from our opponent. That's acceptable. We're going to hopefully start pulling away with our Beanstalk engine soon. Okay, a reanimate. So we have an answer to this. I will take out these troll of Kazadooms. Our opponent is force of willing. Um, I think we'll force a ball back here. We draw a card if we do this, so... That feels pretty good. Just draw a regular card first. A Solitude, happy to see you. Right, so now we get to see their hand, which is really important information here. We also get to take these out. Okay. Well, they got some stuff over there. Grief pitching the Dismember. Even though they still have the Dismember in, really. Okay, so... What are we going to lose here? Alright, we're losing this Solitude, that's fine. I don't hate that. I don't want this life in the just yet. Prismatic ending. That can be useful shortly. I think we will fire off this brainstorm. I'm pretty happy to put this mystic sanctuary away. Uh, wasteland. Yep, yeah, that's pretty useful here. Lore revealed. Okay, so we can start wastelanding our opponent and just putting them in the dirt. Let's get rid of this mystic sanctuary. And I don't think we need the lore revealed just yet. So we go. And then we can life and alone those away next turn. And just start in at our opponent and denying them resources. I'd like to dredge his life from the loan, please. Let's cast life from the loan, targeting our wasteland. Here comes the wasteland, and we've got them in the squeeze. And in tomb. Okay, that's a little bit spooky. Okay, so they got an attractor, so if they have reanimate and a mana source at some point, they can get us. Oh, a surveil land. Well, I guess we're going to be wastelanding that. Let's get to wasteland and this island back. Just keep attacking our opponent's mana. We can think about an Uro soon. If our opponent misses a land drop, then we get to do something a bit better. Okay, a swamp. That's not really helpful for our plan, is it? So we'll say no to this and draw a regular card. Okay, so we don't really have any card selection right now available to us. So we are very much just looking at... Okay, so we need to make sure we have white-white available. So I think I'm going to play this Flooded Strand. 
because we might be casting a Supreme Verdict soon. That basic swamp, pretty good for my opponent. Now we've already got the Hedge Maze, so there's nothing else we can find with this Pledge Strand apart from our Ketria Triome. But if we want a White Source, we can't really fetch the Ketria Triome here. We'll say no to this. Restores to Plowshares, that's certainly going to be helpful down the line. Let's crack this. So we want a White Source here, and we want a Green Source from hand. And we'll cast this Uro. Blue, blue. All right, our opponents scoop into the array. Pretty reasonable thing to do. Uh, I like how he sideboarded. Let's just go back in again. I would prefer to have some more removal in this matchup, but it is what it is. It's the price we play, pay sorry, for the fun of Plow Under, which we haven't got to use yet, but we're still only in round one. There's plenty of time for that. Um, what does this hand do? It gives us a counter spell, which isn't really great in this matchup. These prismatic endings are good against their scam plan, but not very good against other things. I think I wouldn't. I would rather go again here. Um, plow, ponder. This seems fine. I'll keep this. I think I'm going to bin off the wasteland for now. We can worry about that later. I think we want to make sure we don't die, and then we can think about grinding our opponent into the dust. So removal spell, graveyard hate. A way to find some more lands. Now we could have kept the the wasteland as a land here. But the Lauren Revealed is already a land. Now, it is a land that can be discarded, but it's a land that's had for colours. So, there is that. Alright, I don't think we're pondering here. I think we need to keep up the plough. But we also have Lauren Revealed as an option here. Entomb. That's pretty good. There goes your Attractor. So, we're going to have to pitch a Beanstalk to this Endurance to stop them getting an Attractor into play. But that's the price we pay sometimes. There's an Underground Sea. What flavor of reanimation spell? All right, I would like to try this around a daze. Let's get rid of that attractor and fizzle there, animate dead. Then at the end step, we can then cycle for a land. So get this tundra. Island cycle this. Our opponent's got very few resources in hand. I'm just going to get this tropical island, get the beanstalk down, and then try and use that to take over this game. Are we in with the beanstalk? We are. Alright, a wasteland. Not necessarily the worst thing to see when our opponent's on low resources. Can further punish them. But we have an answer to a creature. Right, a troll. That's fine. If they want to reanimate that, we can then just nail it. Alright, another six sewers. Pretty good land. They do still have a tractor in their deck for the purposes of Entomb, though, because we put it on the bottom of the library. An Uro. Would I like to just Uro and then ponder, or would I like to Uro hold up plow, or would I like to Uro wasteland? I think I'd like to Uro ponder here. Actually, no, we didn't get to Uro ponder with this setup, do we? We get to Uro hold up plow. Okay, so we've got a plow if they play a creature, that's fine. And we've got untap. We can start playing containment priest and just smashing their stuff down. Sure. Do we want to Plow around days when our opponent's only got two cards in hand. I believe we do. So we're going to do this on our turn rather than our opponent's. Uh, I will go for this plow first. Just see if we get to clear this guy. We do. Okay. So now I will cast a ponder. Um, I don't hate finding more land drops, but this isn't really very exciting. I think we can do better. All right. Brainstorm is probably better, isn't it? Uh, we're going to play this other wasteland out. And I think we're just going to... We could just take out all of our opponent's mana here. But we they could cycle something or entomb response. And then we're going to want to have access to our containment priest. So I think we're going to play containment priest around days in our opponent's end step. Or in response to a reanimation spell. And then we're going to take out our opponent's lands if we deem that necessary. We also have an Uro... Loaded rage come. Okay, so the wasteland plan is looking less exciting. All right, so there is a grief. Would I rather have this containment priest or this? I think I'd rather have the containment priest than the brainstorm. All right, so we're going to lose this brainstorm, but if we find any colored source, we get to put an arrow into play. Actually, that's not true. Capture triangle doesn't work, but there's a lot of colored sources we can draw here. Okay, so let's do the thing we have available to us. Get rid of them. Get back some lands. 
and the grind here continues. So we can go get hedge maids with this as well, so that's worth doing. Um, would I like to trade my contemporaries for grief? Not really. We're on 22 life. And we're about to play an Uro. This, the damage from the grief is not going to be a thing that kills us. I guess it could end up being the thing that's left over that does kill us, but that's not really what this game's going to be down to, taking some chip shots for three. All right, let's crack this flood strand. Let's get this hedge maze. Uh, a Murktide region, I quite like that. That does end the game quickly. But I would rather draw more cards for now. So we're going to play this Uro first. So we'll play this out so we can play around a Daze. So we want green, green, blue, blue. And we get rid of Honda, Endurance, Brainstorm, Fetchland. I guess it's the Lorien revealed here. All right. Uh, let's not bother with a replacement effect. Let's just do that. Okay, so if we attack with our Contempt Priest, it dies to Orcish Bowmasters. But I imagine they would have played Orcish Bowmasters first, but we don't need to risk that. We're so far ahead, we don't need to risk things like that. If, if the game was closer, then we could do that. All right, Petty Thefting our guy. That's fine. Right, every time we cast it, it digs us into our deck, gains us life to basically negate a grief for a turn. Seems fine by me. We can also just play a Murktide Regent soon. So we're going to dredge the life from the loam now. We want cards in our graveyard here. Okay, so play this little friend. Green. One. All right, let's get another Uro down. Yeah, we should have cast a life alone first there. Um, okay, I would like to get another Beanstalk down. One, two, three, four, five. Play the land yet this turn. We could just play this Merc Tide. And not. Um, I will go and get a Tundra here. We'll play this. We'll crack this. Let's go and get. I don't think we want this uh, myst Mystic Sanctuary just yet. So, right, let's do a guy here. So, we want to leave the Euro in. I guess we'll leave a land in because that's something we can get back. Or do you want to leave the, the plow in? Is the other option here. I think we can leave the plow in. Right, this is going to draw us two cards. We got Bowmasters here. A daze. All right, so we don't get to pay for this, but we do still get to draw two cards, which is a okay. Another Uro and a brainstorm. Okay, now we can happily attack. We've only got eight minutes left on our clock, so we do need to be a bit more uh, decisive with this. I don't have the the most amount of reps on these bank control decks. So I am not always the quickest at playing them. But I think we should have enough time to win the game here. So they're going to play this Brazen Borrower, I believe, from their hand. Uh, from their exile when we wasteland them. Let's just get that gone now. Let's go to tax. I'm going to play the Borrower. This can only block flyers, so they can't block our guy. Let's move some cards around with a Brainstorm. I don't really want this life in the lame anymore. All right, let's put this back and Beanstalk can go. No, not the Beanstalk. The the other, the bonus Uro can go here. Um, what lands do we have left? We have a trop here. We just have the Mystic Sanctuary. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we just get the Ketra Triome here, and then we cast this Uro for its escape cost. Blue, blue, green, green. I should have tapped slightly differently, but time is against us here. We should have left up the blue mana saw, the, the, the tundra, so that we could wasteland something. So we have a mystic sanctuary. Sorry, uh, we should have left up the tundra in case we drew a plow. Sorry, I'm uh, getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So our opponent's got one card in hand. Is there one card in hand going to be better than all of this stuff? Like, that's reasonable. It's annoying, but I can live with it. There's no point getting the mystic sanctuary yet because we don't have anything in our graveyard but we've got 28 cards left in our library which is quite a lot so we can go deep on these beanstalks if that's what we want to do all right let's get another beanstalk all right so let's solitude here while our opponent doesn't have any interaction 
I'm going to draw a bunch of cards. This comes in. I think we'll tag this Grief. We'll attack with our Containment Priest. Cast a Ponder here as well. Um, okay. Um, I'll take this Force of Will in my hand. Okay. This game, I believe, is basically unlosable now. They can't block our Solitudes. We can just crack for five, gaining three each time. They can crack for six the turn after next. They got another under city sewers here. They do indeed. We just have to make sure we don't lose to the clock here. But I think we should be fine for that. Uh, do we care about this? Probably. Let's get rid of one of these excess Uros we have. Just kicking around. Alright. A bit more graveyard hate in case we need that. They crack for three. That's fine by me. We don't really need this graveyard hate. Go to tax. Bash for some. Uh... Let's just get rid of more of their guys. White, white, one, two, three. Yeah, we draw some more cards. We need to not deck as well. Let's get rid of this. Take them off their land. Okay, Field of the Dead. I guess it's a friend. We'll go to clean up. We'll discard some arrows. Doesn't really matter what we discard. We're just trying to play quickly now. So we fetch a land with this flooded strand and we have lethal damage. All right, our opponent's scooping it up. It took us a while to win there, but the inevitability of our control deck is pretty strong. And basically, against these sort of scammy decks, if you're playing all the card of Art you can kind of rebuild after you get scammed. And that's what happened here. And we managed to stop the big scary thing, which could have just buried us right early on. So yeah, 1-0, let's go to round two. All right, we are into round two now. We are on the play. We can hedge maze, which is like half a ponder. Um, so I'll, I'll take that. We've got a little bit of defense in the Force Wheels. We've got a cantrip. We've got a nice engine in the Beanstalk. We can start going up. Let's get ourselves a little bit of Surveil Value. A Ponder. That is pretty good. I'll put that on top of our library. So we've got two Force of Wheels locked and loaded if we need them. If we can get the, brainstorm, the, the Beanstalk down first, then uh, we'll be swimming in cards. Mox Diamond. Hmm. Is this where we're supposed to fight? If our opponent is Green White Depths, then no. If our opponent is Lands, then maybe. But we do have Prismatic Endings. Alright. Wasteland, that's not really a very friendly thing for our opponent to be doing, is it? No. Um, Exploration. We can counter spell this one. Get rid of the Supreme Verdict. We're not casting a 4 mana spell for a while. So the top card of our library is a Ponder. We play a Savannah out. It gives us the opportunity to maybe cast Beanstalk next turn, but it's very bad to another Wasteland. But because they don't have the exploration, I think it's worth trying to do. But if they just Wasteland us and put us in the dirt, then fair enough, opponent. You can have that. Thespian Stage. That is not a Wasteland. That's good news. Life from Malone. Okay. I don't think we're counterspelling that. I think we just have to try and hit our land and go from there. Alright. I'm going to scoop this one up. I... We're just going to get Wasteland locked here, and it's not worth our time, because our deck is sometimes quite slow to win. So, what is good against our opponent? Um, if our opponent's running things like Spheres and stuff, maybe Force of Vigor is something we're interested in. Force of Negation actively better than Force of Will, because it can exile the life from the Loams. We have our own Loams, which is quite nice too. Surgical Extraction is an interesting one here, as is Endurance. Like, this whole selection of things here... <clears throat> certainly has text because if we just get a paradox zone down we can just kind of let that do its thing and be fine i don't think we need the supreme verdict it can clean up a bunch of tokens from as saga but that's not really what we need plow under against our opponent's land centric deck where they get to shuffle the top of the library i'm sorry plow under i don't think this is your time to shine so this gets us an endurance and then what so the force of vigor also cleans up sagas and stuff which is one of the scarier things going uh, I like having Solitudes as a way to answer our opponent's big scary monsters in the Marit Lage tokens. Do I want a second Endurance? I'll take a second Endurance over a Ponder. Let's try that. Uh, this hand does not play. Let's mulligan this one. Okay, this hand kind of plays. Would I rather have a Force of Negation or an Uro? Oh, sorry, a Force of Negation or an Endurance. I think we pitch the Endurance here. We want to keep lands. That's an important part of this. So we have a force of negation we can pitch if we need to. 
which is going to do more than the endurance to begin with anyway because it's going to be able to get rid of the life from alone once and for all instead of having to let them get one life from alone going where they maybe get some card advantage off of it from a fetch land or whatever but i'd very much like to cast an up the beanstalk i don't believe we're fighting over this mox diamond caracas okay a sphere of resistance how annoying is sphere of resistance going to be for us it doesn't feel like it's going to be very friendly Sure, I think we, we are going to hit this. That's a relatively big cost. Right, let's get this beanstalk down. Oh, no, I clicked the wrong land. I meant to click the Caracas. Oh, no, that's an absolute spew there. Oh, no. This gets wastelanded, and they play a sphere. And that's real sad. All right, they've got exploration going. They can do lots of things. A Rishtan port. And a sphere. Okay, that actually doesn't bother us too much. We're just going to play this beanstalk, but I'm very glad we counted the first sphere now. All right, let's do what we should have done last time. We are still lacking blue mana. All right, we found the blue mana, so we can start pondering soon. Start brainstorming, getting all that good stuff going. So our opponent is unlikely to have an engine. They probably just kept their hand on the back of a couple of spheres and the Rishan ports. They could just deny us mana, which is perfectly reasonable, and eventually they'll draw into something useful. So maybe we're just going to be licking each other for a little bit. A wasteland, yep, that's uh, pretty cruel. We're just going to get wasteland and ported here. I believe so. If they port us, we don't get to cast any spells. Actually, no, that's not true. We uh, we can still cast with only one sphere. Goodbye, forest. Um, okay, let's... I think we're just doing a ponder first, and then we got a fetch land brainstorm for next turn. And we can do that in response to them tapping our land down. Because they're probably going to tap down our blue source. Force of Vigor. Actively like that one. Life from Malone. To pitch to it is also pretty reasonable. Uh, although we probably just want lands here, right? So if we put the... Well, the loam is lands, isn't it? So put the strand, then the loam. And then we'll tap this Force of Vigor into our hand. Our opponent appears to be on some other stuff here. Okay, a crop rotation. What is this going to be? If this is the wasteland, then that's A-OK -okay for us because we just... Okay, it's a saga. So that is something I would like to blow up that our opponent has. The cost of doing that is quite high, though. So they're going to tap us down here. All right, I think we're going to brainstorm. All right, I don't really want this plow this on top as well yeah so in our opponent's upkeep we're going to blow up there as a saga and probably the sphere i think that's the correct one i guess we could just take them off of green mana though that's the other option here and try and bury them underneath their sphere if we just hit these two so no tokens for you no green sources and you're going to be locked under your own sphere have they got a crop rotation here they do. Okay. I'm just going to get another saga. We're probably getting a hedge maze at end step so we can try and find ourselves a little bit more selection. I would have liked to have been able to keep that ley line, but I don't think we... Sorry, not the ley line, the life from the lane, but that just isn't a thing we got to do there. All right. So that's extra awkward because this saga is now going to tick up immediately because it ticks up in the main phase. So that didn't really achieve much outside of blowing up their mocks. Certainly an annoying one. And this is a route to a 2020 in the not too distant future. Let's go and get this hedge maze and hope we find something good here. A solitude, that can go into the graveyard. That's not what we want here. Like, yeah, we can blow up some stuff, but it's not really going to do what we need here. An Uro, that's pretty reasonable though. All right. Green. Get this Uro going. It's not the most exciting thing, and they might have some graveyard hate coming. Right, I'm making a token, sure. All right, so we put a wasteland in here. We take out the saga, so they can't tutor at least. So we just have to beat this one little guy. So we can put Force of Vigor on top of our... No, we can't. We don't have enough islands yet. We need another island, then we can put Force of Vigor on top and try and nail this sphere. Pithing Needle. Um, I guess we're cracking this. Uh, I 
suppose we probably just want the Ketria Triome or no, we, we want a white source here, don't we? So we're just gonna get this Tundra. We could get a planes, but that doesn't help us cast Uro. Yep, so we're getting this. What are they gonna choose with this pit of needle? It's mainly just to give their construct plus one, which is fine, but we can slam down an Uro next turn and they've already got rid of their Caracas, so until they find a green source and a loam, we don't have to worry about them bouncing it. What are you going to name opponent? I suppose we could have got the Savannah instead of the Tundra, but I'd rather have more blue sources, I think, because that's how we dig ourselves out of holes. The Fairy Time Rattler, that is a card that is not in our deck. Now, maybe it's a card that should be on our deck because it's very good, but uh, it's not the world we're in. Right, they found a green source, but we get to put an arrow into play this turn. Green, green, blue, blue, and one. And then what are we getting rid of? Probably Force of Negation is the least exciting one there. Uh, Solitude is kind of okay. Caracas is also pretty good. I guess we're getting rid of a lot of instants and sorceries. So we get rid of one fetch land. And I guess it's the Solitude that goes. That makes sense. We don't really have any way of recurring creatures. All right. Uro, here we go. We do not have another thing to put in, but we can draw some extra cards next turn. We might be able to play both Beanstalks next turn. If our opponent doesn't do anything too scary this turn, then I think we can start to pull ahead. The moment it feels relatively poised. Don't believe they're attacking with their Construct. Right, they're just going to be tapping us down with this port, I believe. Unless they want to Thespian stage something. Right, you can tap down my Hedge Maze. Force of Negation. Holding up Force of Negation does feel kind of good. I guess we want to attack with the Euro first, right? And see what it shakes loose. That might give us some better options. A Force of Vigor. That is pretty tasty, truth be told. But what am I actually worried about right now? Life from the Loam is probably the scariest thing our opponent can do. So if we hold this up, we can just cast Force of Negation. So I think that's what we're going to do. We have the Euro. So let's just ride that to victory. Also, like a crop rot would be a really nice thing to hit too. And at some point, we'll end up with some more lands. Are you going to tap down our hedge maze again? They're not. That's very interesting. They didn't do that. Right, let's attack. Uh, we'll not put that in. That gives us another way of playing through. Yeah, this is another way of playing through some stuff. But I think we're most likely just going to get pitched. We just need to not lose from this board position, and we're in a very good shape. We can just play the Endurance or whatever. Right, they're tapping down our Hedge Maze now. All right, I will float a green mana. So this means they want to have more mana to play on their turn, which is interesting. There is a Wasteland. Crucible of Worlds. So this is what we've been waiting for. Blue, blue, one, one. We do not want our opponent to have this effect in play. All right, that's the game. So not tapping out for Beanstalk was very much the correct thing to do. I think we're just going to jam back in again and see how we fare. Um, this hand is okay. We've got some lands underneath us. We've got a Ponder to dig some stuff up. We can get a basic as well. So we're probably getting a basic island off of the Flooded Strand and then a basic forest off of the Misty Rainforest. I don't think we're wastelanding this. All right, let's get a basic. Start the pondering. Force of Negation is something I'm actively interested in. The other cards, not so much. So well, I guess we have a Brainstorm anyway, so we can just shuffle what we don't want away next turn. So I'd rather be left with this Force of Negation than not. So I think we'll probably do something like this. So we have protection against the loan, which is the scariest thing our opponent could do for the most part. I think we're okay with a uh, sphere. Exploration. Okay, we can clean that up with a force of vigor soon. Okay, that is something we can blow up. A sphere of resistance. Um, I think in response, I'm going to blow up these two permanents, and then we can waste them off green. So we lose our endurance for this, that's fine. Do I care about this sphere or do I want to keep doing what we're doing? One, two, three, 
Uh, if we counter spell this, and then we play it, so that'll be four cards in our graveyard. This will be five cards. So we can just make, if we counter spell this, we can just make a Merc Tide next turn. And just try and race our opponent that way. So we have a white spell in hand, so we'll get this Tundra. All right. Let's have a 6-6. Six, six. It's not quite a 3 clock, but it's close. The other option there was to try and waste land our opponent off green. Right, there's a waste land. A choke. Okay, like, we have our plan here, right? We have a plan, and it's stop our opponent from being able to play the game and beat them down with this Murktide region. We do have access to Aesol's to Plowshares. We can get a Savannah, but we might have just stopped our opponent from being able to do anything. A Shadow Spit, that's not very good without any friends. Our opponent's got one card in hand, and they're facing down a 6-6 six, six Murktide. The Pithing Needle, okay. Is this going to name a Fetch Land, or is it going to name Teferi again? So, Misty Rainforest. Okay, they named the wrong Fetch Land. That's good for us. Source to Plash, yeah. So, just play this out. Have a little swing for six. We found the aggressive line, and hopefully this will carry us through. Okay, they got a Forest. But they don't have anything to do with it right now. I'm not going to get Hedge Maze to surveil here. That's not going to be what this game is about. A Wasteland. Okay, I'm a fan of that one. So our opponent needs to get something like a Maze of Ith this turn. And if they do, we just Wasteland it. But they'll think the Maze of Ith will be enough here. Or they might just be dead. All right, we got the match there with the aggressive line. And I think that puts us 2-0. Not a bad start to the league. Let's see if we can keep it rolling. All right, we're on the play... Uh, yeah, this seems fine. A little bit of removal. We've got a cantrip. We've got a sort of engine here. We don't have anything to go with it quite yet, but we can start cycling the Ketra Triumph in a few turns. All right, let's play out our unwasteable, unwaste landable land. All right, opponent, what would you like to do? Under City Sewers, one of those players, eh? Fatal Push. Okay, so that says they're more towards, like, Shadow... Or regular scam rather than rescaminator. And we are still cycling this. I would like to get a white source, so that's the tundra. And we just play out the tundra they know about. Again, we want to cycle this capture try because we've got a bunch of lands in hand. Okay. So hopefully this is gonna match up where white removal is good. Because we've got two bits of it in our hand. A wasteland. Right. We want we actively want our opponent to do that because we are a life from the loan deck. Maze. All right, I'm going to do this hedge maze. Uh, a brainstorm. Yes, I would like to have that. So if they have another wasteland, it means they're spending multiple turns and resources trying to wasteland us, and then we just cast the life and loam, and we get to ignore them. Cycling a troll of Kazadoom. Sure. I'll buy you. So this is a Orcish Bowmaster, if ever I saw one. So I would quite like to have our brainstorm do something. So I'm just going to play out this Savannah and then pass. And then when they flash in the Bowmasters, I will cast the Brainstorm. There it is. Cast the Brainstorm. Uh, Supreme Verdict might be useful down the line. This is too many lands, though. Um, I guess we'll bury... A couple of lands is fine here, isn't it? All right. And ping us down. What we would really like to see here is just them spending their turn playing... Some guys, like some a troll of Kazadoom. Like reanimate troll of Kazadoom, play another Bowmasters, get that extra point of damage in, and then we just untap and verdict. That would be the dream. But I'm happy just to prismatic ending this. Sort of carry on with our life. There's a wasteland, sure. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some life from the loam stuff, I think, this turn. And that lets us shuffle away the Caracasus on top as well. Right, we'll play out this so we can play around days, just in case that's the thing our opponent is interested in. Green, blue. By leaving the hedge maze untapped, they're more likely to wasteland this if they have another wasteland, and we'd rather get this back to get the surveil value off later on, rather than our trop. Brainstorm from our opponent, sure. We need them to not grief us. We can obviously use Mystic Sanctuary to put the Supreme Verdict back on top, if we need to. Cycling your reveal. This does feel like... Bug beans, more than anything now. Which is going to be like a bit of a slow, grindy matchup. And traditionally, their deck is very good against what we're doing. But we have more basics than the other beanstalk decks, so maybe we'll be okay. We've seen here an Uro. Sure. Annoying, but 
what isn't annoying these days, right? Okay, so we're gonna dredge life from the loam. They are way standing, that's interesting. Let's go back. Okay, so are we just loaming here, or am I more interested in just getting rid of this guy for now? I think I just want to get rid of this guy for now. We want to leave a green source in hand. So we're probably playing the tundra here. Let's get rid of this guy now. All right. I don't think we are in need of our life alone just yet. We should be able to cast it next turn. Catcher Triumph does tap for green if we end up in a situation where we have to do that. All right. So maybe they're not bug beans. Like Troll of Kazadoom is not something you would see that much of in bug beans. So there's some there's some ways sort of like scam slash bug beans that general ballpark. Any other threats, opponent? Let us supreme verdict you. A ponder, sure. An uro. Quite like the uro here. Um, should let's cast uro. Could have a a bowmasters here. They do not. All right. So this field of the dead will come in untapped. Oh, will come in tapped. Sorry. I think that's reasonable. Let's change the things. I would like to play this Ketria Triome now. Oh no, we, we've already played a land, haven't we? Of course. Okay. So we have got two green sources. They can't take us off of Life from the Loam. Can take us off of an immediate Uro. Now our opponent has been sat there with an Uro that they haven't wanted to use, so that's kind of interesting. Right, here comes their Uro. Oh no. A Grief. So we're probably losing the Verdict here. Which is a nice, clean answer to a lot of stuff. Oh no, it took the ending, that's interesting. So we can clean these two up. If you want to, or we can just play the Euro. It's probably the better of the two options. A Solitude. Okay, that's nice for down the line. Pop our graveyard out. Let's cast this Euro. So, green, green, blue, blue. And what are we getting rid of? Get rid of a Brainstorm, a Solitude. One of the endings, I guess another ending is probably worth getting rid of here. And I want the Caracas still. Get rid of a Trop. You got a Force of Will for this opponent? They do indeed. Okay. Play our Catcher Triome. They can Wasteland us off of Solitude, but they don't know we have it. If they have a Wasteland, that is. And we can Supreme Verdict and then use the Solitude to clean up the. Uro, if that's what comes out afterwards. There's another grief, though. That could be annoying for us. An Uro into our face-up Supreme Verdict. Interesting. Like, they're still getting a card off this. It's still a perfectly fine interaction. Let's play this. Uh, we should have played that afterwards. I try to play around something, but that's not really... Working. I was thinking about doing the Life of the Lone first, so we just made a... White, white, blue... Kill everything here. Crack this. Oh, we don't have a green source here. We, we, we have our green source from our Catcher Triumph, but I was looking for another one. So let's go feel the dead trigger. We should have more zombies here than we have, but such is life. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Let's get this life of the loan going. All right, so we have the, the never-ending horde of zombies here. And we have the solitude for their Uro if they want it. We can also just Caracas it. So we'll probably fire off a Solitude. If that doesn't work, then we'll Caracas it. They know we have the Caracas though. We are not going to dredge this life alone. Not this turn. Interesting. Uh, can I do this? Green. Colorless. That gives us a Beanstalk. One, two, three, four, five. That gives us a Solitude. Let's play this. Yield to this. Another friend. Like we could just bounce this and just save our removal. Alright, our opponent's had enough. Good. Um, okay, so our opponent's got Uros in their decks. So that's something that I'm interested in surgically extracting. But we also have plows and stuff, which are good for that. We've seen beanstalks. No, sorry, we haven't seen beanstalks. Do we think these plows are going to be good? Like, we do want to play them in one of the rounds. And we have to decide when that round is going to be. This feels quite tempo-y. And is this a tempo matchup? I don't know about that. Mm. I don't just want to be boarding out our plows, our plowunders every round. But it does feel like that's going to be the best thing to board out here. Sorry, everyone. I'm boarding out the plows. 
Mm, we got removal for Bowmasters. We've got some lands to make. We've got a brainstorm to sort of ease ourselves into the game. This seems fine. We can play on basics as well. Get, but yeah, an island from this and planes from this. Nile Spellbomb, sure. Don't really care about that. Do you want to just try and snap off a wasteland and see if that's good here? It might be. I'm going to try that. Oh, we're resetting the game, but they have a Nile Spellbomb. And we're the one... Okay, so they have a wasteland. All right. That's just going to cycle a troll or something soon. All right, so we can play this out. We can go and get ourselves a basic forest. Uh, sorry, basic island. And then cast a little ponder. Uh, another solitude doesn't hurt. Uh, sorry, another wasteland doesn't hurt. Solitude is probably going to be useful here if we're seeing trolls and griefs and that sort of jam. So I think we're probably burying tundra, then the solitude, then the wasteland. Oh, we want to keep making land drops for sure. We've still got stuff to do with them. We've got some brainstorms later on where we can find the specific things we need if there's any answers. All right, so they didn't have the Lorien revealed in our tent, so that's what they do for turn. So this wasteland is looking pretty good. Are they going to get a basic here? Or do they need their colours? They are getting the underground sea. We love to see it. Our opponent, probably not so much. Right, let's take out this underground sea. A brainstorm from our opponent. They'll see if they're brainstorm locked or not now. And depending on how they value their time, if they are brainstorm locked, they might just pack it in. That certainly happened numerous times to me in the past where our opponents just brainstorm in response to wasteland and gone, ah, I can't go up with this one. Right, they are evoking a grief. Honestly, that's fine. Our hand's pretty grief proof. Right, they took out our brainstorm. Which is fine. So what are we doing with our mana here? Uh, this looks like a good spot to brainstorm. We've got a fetch land, so I'd like to keep that. We're not really about the Caracas and the Field of the Dead just yet. So I think we can probably send those home for now. And then deploy this. We, we do want to shuffle, but we don't want to play into our opponent's wasteland. But do we care? How much do we care about playing into our opponent's wasteland right now? When they don't have anything going on. I would really like to ponder here. So we're going to go and get, I guess we could head, hedge maze. That's kind of like a ponder. Yeah, let's hedge maze instead. Um, let's get rid of that one for now. That one. That was, a, that was me tunneling into looking for, like, life from the lane type stuff. Now, our opponent doesn't want to get rid of this because it means they can cycle some of their things. Right, so let's ponder here. We just kept that back time. We could have just ended this game, really. Uh, up the Beanstalk, I'd very much like to have. The Wasteland, we've already established that's a, a mean thing that we can do. Let's play this. Play the Beanstalk. We can defend this with... Actually, no, we can't defend this with Force. We don't have a blue card. Our opponent could force this. They did not. All right, we're very far ahead now. We've sort of gone past the Flood Beats Screw stage that you sometimes have in games. Uh, uh, sorry, Screw Beats Flood stage of games because we've now got a bunch of cards in hand so it's not as if they're being mana screwed it means that they've got a load of cards they can deploy above what we have all right they found themselves a green source i don't like our opponent having a green source so i've got something to say about it that's the third wasteland i don't think our opponent's gonna be very happy about that i don't blame them but we're maintaining our plan a murktide region you say all right, let's just cast this now while we can. So we get rid of the things that make it big to try and end this game. We get a card out of this. And our opponent's scooping up. Yep, Wastelands are good, as it turns out. So we are now 3-0. This deck is uh, chugging along nicely. We haven't got to plow anyone under yet. This would have been quite a fun one to have plow under in, maybe, but not for our opponent, obviously. Although plow under is never fun for your opponent. All right, let's go to round four. Island Ponder Keep, let's go. Another land matchup, perhaps. All right, they've very much nailed their colors to the master. We'll get ourselves a basic forest. Sorry, a basic island. I keep saying basic forest. Right, ponder time. What do you got for us, deck? Life of Malayam is pretty reasonable here, to be honest. I'll keep these cards. Yeah, so we can Life of Malayam a bit, make a Merc Tide and hope they can't answer it like we did in the previous round. One of the previous rounds, anyway, against lands. Ghost Quarter, you say? That's a very different kettle of fish. We only have one more basic left in our deck. 
Yes, I would like to use the ability. Let's get our... Oh, no, sorry. We've got two basics. Okay, we'll get forest. If we see a life from the loam here, things could get a little bit squiffy. Because the problem is, we can life from the loam some stuff back, but they can expiration. Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, that's something I wouldn't mind killing if possible. So our opponent is not just straight up regular lands here. So, play this, we life from the loam two lands back. That seems like the play. So what's probably going to happen is we're going to spend a while doing this treading water stuff by like get loaming back some lands and doing that sort of jazz. And then our opponent's just going to wipe us soon. Now we can't life from the loam too much because our opponent can get a Paducah Bog. Um, what are we getting rid of here? I think we're getting rid of the Uro so we can just replay it. But they can Paducah Bog with it whenever they like. Picking up an Uro and a life from the loam is a pretty high prize here. But I don't think we can afford to not have lands against our opponent who's got three pieces of land destruction so far. Giant Depths, okay. Up oh, the Beanstalk, okay. Let's get some cards going. If we can find a white source, that'd be helpful. Uh, sorry, a white card for our Solitude. Force of Will. If our opponent has a... Well, they have the Elvis Reclaim, so we, the Wasteland, excuse me, isn't going to be that helpful. But if they're activating this, then we can Wasteland after they've activated it. And that maybe gives us a fighting chance. They can't get an untapped Thespian stage with a Reclaimer. So we don't have to worry about them killing us right now. The Ghost Quarter. Alright, what would you like to find, opponent? Alright, if they get a Thespian stage, we waste down the Thespian stage. If they've got crop rotation, then so be it. Alrighty. So the reason we get rid of that one is... This one taps for mana. This one doesn't tap for mana. Okay, so they're going to make a 2020. They should make it now so that we can't waste land them on our turn. We have access to that as a thing. Although they only need one more land and they get to ignore that because of their own wasteland. So they can choose the timings. So they can force out action. What we're looking for really is a white card for this solitude. Well, it didn't have a land though. Attacking with a reclaimer. So they should make this now. It's a correct play. Given what they, uh, given they've attacked with their reclaimer as well. I can make it in our upkeep, but there's not really much point. All right, we will not dredge the. Okay, we didn't get the thing we needed, so we are just dead here. I think we're still right to do that. Uh, let's play this out and see if our opponent makes their guy. Like if we life from alone back the wasteland, they can just make it in response to us doing that, and that doesn't get us anywhere as well. We'd have to have our opponent make several mistakes in order to flat tap. Right, they're making it. Let's just scoop this one up. All right, so kind of lands looking, but not 100% convinced that they're just straight up normal lands. So I think they might have some amount of stuff that we're going to want these things for like we did before. Sorry, Plow Under. We're not getting to the mana value where that's going to be useful. Supreme Verdict, I think we're just going to use our Prismatic Innings to clean up the little guys. Um, I think we trimmed a couple of Ponders last time, and we trimmed the Force of Wills. Or we just removed them entirely. That leaves us with one more bit to find. We definitely want the full Prismatic Endings in this matchup, because we've seen the guys. Uh, I don't think we're getting rid of any of our lands. We're getting rid of A Beanstalk. Get rid of A Beanstalk. Um... <sighs> I guess we can just start doing beanstalks. Though we have less stuff that works with beanstalks, we brought out our forces. So maybe we're not supposed to even have the beanstalks, I don't know. I'm not a master of the old band control decks. Ancient Tomb, we're going to see a sphere. Nope. A Mox Diamond. Pitching a Thespian Stage. Okay, that's a bit rude. Not a fan of the old choke. But we can play around it a little bit here. We don't have to get an island. So we can go and get ourselves... It's just the forest, isn't it? Is the only thing that doesn't get hit down by this. All right, that's what we're doing. And then if we find a blue so uh, a prismatic ending and a blue source, we can then get rid of this when the time comes. We've got an answer for one of their guys. If they like, push into the combo quickly, we can say no to that. But this choke is going to do some work for sure. Soul Guy Lantern. That's not where we're interested in doing anything about. Not that we have any options to do anything about that. Because we don't have any blue card to pitch to our force. But even if we did, that wouldn't be what I'd use it for. 
Apparently, can be pretty confident we don't have a counter spell since we didn't counter spell the choke. So, a relatively good time to. Oh dear. Right, they might be gaining 20 life soon. Exploration, sure. We're going to see. No testament stage. Alright, so we have a wasteland here. That is somewhat useful. Let's get some more beanstalks going. I'm actually glad for this beanstalk now. And then I'll play this wasteland. So we have the blue source as well now. We just need the prismatic ending to get rid of this choke. But in the meantime, we can kill Merit Lage tokens like all the live long day. Don't want our opponent to gain 20 life for it. Not really, but it's certainly better than us taking 20 damage. Now the Moxes are going to get close to empty in their hand. Caracas is gone. There is an expiration. So they got one card in hand. What is it? I think it's worth cycling this now. Now our opponent can have a window to go here, but we have the answer and we know they don't have anything. So all of these get caught underneath the choke. So we may as well get whatever. Capture a Triome. You're not really the one we want, are you? Right, so let's play out this Tundra. And I guess we're passing here. We have the ability to force of negation something. There is a Thespian stage in our opponent's graveyard. So I would force of negation a life in the loam and feel pretty good about it. There is a wasteland. That is pretty good. And annoying. Definitely annoying, because we only have one white source here. We do have a planes left in our deck. We can't find the planes. Another choke. Um, I guess we have to hit this. Yeah, I think we have to hit this. Because our whole plan involves getting out from underneath one choke. We're not going to get out from underneath two. Oh, like, we could, but it's going to take some work. Just cycle this. Alright. A non-wastelandable land. I'll take that. A force of vigor. Okay. So we can blow up their mocks and their choke. That's pretty good. I kind of want to see if our opponent's got a, um, a saga off the top. Because I'd rather hit the saga than a mox. I don't even have to fire off this force of vigor unless our opponent forces us into it. Yeah, I'm happy just to continue like this for now. Prismatic ending. Okay, that's one of the things we've been looking for. So let's get rid of this choke. So this is... Oh, no, we need to fetch that first, don't we? This probably gets us a ton... No, a tropical island. I think it's a trop here. So we go... Blue, green, white. Let's get rid of this choke. Then it's our opponent's turn. So let's hope their draw isn't great. There's a saga. So that's the exact thing we've been holding this force of vigor for. So feeling pretty rewarded there. We also have the wasteland if we want to use that instead. So now we've drawn the land, we could take out both their green sources and wasteland their saga. That sounds like a pretty good sequence of draws there. Let's hit this and see if they do anything about it. Because if they go and get another saga with a crop rotation, I'd rather force a vigor that. So this sequencing is pretty important. And we certainly have Merit Lage covered. We will need to win the game at some point, but that's what our deck does after the fact. We're going to see the crop rotation here. What would you like, opponent? Are you going to go for a Thespian stage? We have that covered. Are you going to go for a another saga? I've gone for another saga. Okay. So we're going to hit this and this. Oh, we, we can't do that yet, can we? We need to crack this. Let's go and get ourselves probably a Tundra here. Let's get rid of the Mox Diamond and the other saga. So green, green, one. Why don't we do this before it can tap the man? Not that it's really relevant here. But yeah, so that sequencing that I said came up exactly as I suspected. So, pretty good. Now, Life in the Loam is obviously going to be pretty annoying for us. But we've boarded in some stuff to deal with that. Like your Endurance. We've got Surgicals. We've got uh, our Force of Negation. Right deck. A brainstorm. This is a two mana brainstorm, which is more than I normally like to spend on my brainstorms. Good card, still good. We need to keep making some land drops here. Um, interested in this wasteland. This endurance is very good. I'd very much like to have access to this next turn. Um, so I think we're just putting a plow and a ponder on top for now. Place wasteland and pass. 
So we could hit their ancient tomb here and just keep them off of being able to cast any spells for the turn. But if they're playing as a saga, we're going to feel stupid for not having this wasteland held up. Okay, so now we just get to hold up this endurance and we have a win condition that also messes with our opponent's deck. So if they cast a life from the loam here, we just endurance in response. And that's going to set them back a fair bit. And the best case scenario, they don't have anything here and we just get to cast our endurance now. Green, green, one, two. All right, this is going to go a long way to getting us towards winning this game. So now I'm very happy to start wastelanding Ancient Tombs. Right, let's bash for three with our Endurance. And our second main, we can fire off a good old-fashioned Ponder. What have you got for us, deck? Um, another Endurance is fine. Um, yeah, it like adds, adds to the board. I'll take that. And um, we can put something on top if we want to. We can even draw it by pitch casting our solitude. Hey, Bajuka Bog. Uh, are there anything here that I desperately want on top of my library? I kind of don't want our opponent to have a Mox Diamond. We could just get this Prismatic Ending. It means we lose Endurance, but I think that's fine. I think the Prismatic Ending is... Slightly better here. I, I kind of want them to have the sphere in play. I think I'll just take this ending. Our opponent's paying some costs over there. A surgical extraction. Be my guest. Alright. No value off of our Mystic Sanctuary, but our opponent did spend two life. Which doesn't actually affect the clock here. Be bad for them. Alright, let's brainstorm, see if we can find a little bit more juice here. Um, we can't play this endurance. We can play this beanstalk. So I guess I'll put back this brainstorm and this plow is fine. Let's attack. Miraculously, we have a little bit more time on our clock than our opponent, which is uh, not something I was expecting in this matchup. We can have six through this turn because we just don't have any available plays due to the sphere. Crack them down to one this turn. All right, Thespian stage. They can make their merit lage. Okay, and they can also make us pay for our endurance. Sure. There you get a 2020. I will keep our guy alive. This does make the game continue for some time, but... Alright, we do have a solitude that we can throw out here. We can't do the endurance, though. Go attacks. Go bash for this one. We also have the endurance held up here if we want it. Actually, no, we should be paying with the blue there. We made a mistake. Right, this is Savannah. I think we're going to brainstorm our opponent's end step here. Let's fall the velocity of it. Force of Vigor is fine. Lands are obviously fine. Let's just bury these two. Just come tax. Pair another land. This can pay for the upkeep of our little endurance friend. Ancient Tomb. I don't really think our opponent wants to be tapping that. Let's just get our threat down. Put these out so they can't Loam them back. Let's pay for these. Play a land, go to tax. Put your hedge maze at the end just so we can scry towards like uh, force of negation, like an extra layer of protection. We can't play this solitude to have lethal damage. All right, there's a dark depths. Let's crack this. Go and get hedge maze. Got surveil on. Don't even need that right now. Uh, it's fine to have, isn't it? We just got to fade one more draw step, really. All right, so we pay for our guys. We'll draw the surge core. We'll attack for six. Put our opponent to three. Pass a turn. We've got a plow if we need it. Our opponent basically has to find Thespian Stage this turn. Oh, they did find Thespian Stage this turn. Okay. Okay, they're scooping it up. They know we have um, Solitude Plow in hand as well. And what we can do is we can attack and plow our own guys so we actually do kill them next turn. Um, this all seems fine. I think we're just going to go back in again. Uh, I would like some more mana for this hand. But it does have a lot of tools we want in the matchup. All right, I'm going to keep it because we've got a basic to brainstorm with as well. Don't fail me, brainstorm. But we can smash up some spooky lands. We can counter spell alone if we have to. We've got a surgical extraction. 
expedition map. It's already worth smashing, is it? All right, let's play a basic land out and pass. If we have to use our force of negation, I'll probably be pitching the Uro because we need this brainstorm to make some more land drops. All right, our opponents just play the Thespian stage. Looks like they're just racing towards the combo. Perfectly reasonable thing to do. Okay, let's brainstorm. Help us out here, deck. All right, we found a land. That's something. Um, we've got these force of negations. I guess we're burying a loam and an euro. I think I'll probably just kill. Oh, uh, I forgot to play my land here. Oh no. Actually, we're just dead here, right? If they get. Oh no, they need um, two land drops, so we've still, still got a bit more time. Alright, we did not get to play our land there because I do not know, despite having played this for a while, how to undo pressing a two to pass. Because two on the keyboard shortcuts basically passes until your opponent does something. Whereas if you just press six to F6 your entire turn, then you can just unclick that. But I don't know how you can unclick the two. So if anyone knows, please let, put it in the comments. Because it's not the first and probably won't be the last time I press the wrong pass priority button and don't know how to get it back. All right, so we're losing our life alone, but we do have more where that came from. We went for an Urza Saga in hand, which is interesting as well. All right, so let's play this beanstalk. This doesn't really impact how, like, I was missing that land drop didn't actually have any noticeable effect because we're going to draw the life from the loam here. So as long as if we could have played anything differently. All right, got these force of vigors kicking around. We've got these force of negations kicking around, and we've got this surgical. So if we can like blow up a saga, extract it, that would be pretty handy. I don't think we need to blow this up now. They can tap it for mana if they want to. They don't have any green mana. We can force a vigor in our opponent's turn. This gives us the out of drawing a wasteland here. So we don't have to do that. A prismatic ending. That doesn't really do what we need it to do, does it? Doesn't mean we're going to have to discard this turn, but I think that's also fine. So we'll probably discard... Oh, they're making... A copy of that. Okay, now that is definitely a punish for where we are here because we can't cast this. Well, we can do it in their upkeep because they'll both be enchantments. That kind of wastes our opponent's entire turn. Uh, I guess we'll discard this array. So, if I want to hit these now, I think we do this and this. And we pitch this Force of Vigor. So, we're going to want this life and loan down the line, I think. So, they can turn the Thespian stage into something else. But it won't have the the factory ability. As we... All right. Oh, wow, they're just letting us take that. That's interesting. Let's get rid of all the Urza Sagas from their deck. And we just need to beat Merit Lage, which is something that we're probably quite good at. They would like to surgical extract their own surgical extraction. This feels like a pretty big game here. So I'm going to see how much we can surgically extract some Sagas from them. All right. What have we got here? Double choke, two reclaimers, just a couple there. Some loams, that's not a surprise, spheres. So yes, they got two reclaimers and three dark depths to win the game with here. How many Thespian stage? One, two, and there's one in the graveyard. Okay, opponent. Echoing deeps, that's gonna be a Thespian stage. All right, so we're gonna need an answer to Merit Lage in the near future. Let's see if we can draw one. Solitude would be pretty good here. All right, let's play this land out. We can use this to get a white source. So we can cast things like swords. But apparently does have a wasteland, so we don't want to just want to fire this out. I guess we could get a planes. That thins our deck slightly. And we're gonna want a planes anyway. Alright. One one, two, three. If we draw a fetch land, though, we can put an Uro into play, which buys us one more turn and allows us to Prismatic Ending, so I don't think we're going to crack this. Oh, no, it doesn't buy us a turn, does it? Because of... If we... No, that doesn't do anything, does it? Because if we were to have a fetch land here, that puts us down to 17, and then the Uro takes us up to 20. So we probably should have cracked this for the marginal thinning. I believe our opponent will go for it. 
but you can see if they do. If they do, we're dead. Yeah, they're going for it. Okay. Prismatic ending was not the one there. Like, we were pretty close. We, if we found, like, one of our seven good white removal spells to take this out, then I think that game is largely won at that point. But we just didn't quite get there. All right, let's go to the final round. Let's see if we can get the 4-1, because we're already 3-1. and one. All right, we are in the final round. We have the plow under, so that's what we've been wanting to cast all day. We're going to keep this one. Uh, we've got to try it at some point, right? And live the dream. We get to start with a half ponder. The old hedge maze. What have you got for us? A force of will. That could be quite useful with all these beanstalks. I'm going to put that on top of my library. So the plan is don't get wastelanded. And then cast up the beanstalk. Then cast up the beanstalk. And then win the game somehow. Plow under our opponent. Draw some cards. If we can draw two cards while plowing under our opponent. That's going to feel pretty damn spicy. A savannah. An elvish reclaimer. So we're looking at like green white depths, we're looking at some sort of maverick list. There's a lot of options our opponent could be jamming. But now we get to hide behind a force of will, so I feel a little bit safer. Let's get the beanstalks rolling. It's always yield to this to save us some time. Alright, so we can force will without even losing a brain well, we'll lose a brainstorm, we'll still have a brainstorm in hand after, which is pretty nice. So we can hopefully use that to find another land. I'd like to hit a land on our next turn anyway. But we'll see what our opponent does. A rather force of will when we have two beanstalks down, obviously. But uh, if we have to force of will this turn, then we will. A lush portico. That's the green white surveil land. It's pretty cool. Not one of the names I can recall by heart yet. Sylvan safekeeper. Sylvan safekeeper. Well, we don't have any removal in hand, so I think I can live with that for now. If our opponent wants to sacrifice some of their lands, then uh, Plow Under is going to be a real doozy for them when we eventually get there. So this turn I would like to draw a land, play up the Beanstalk. Those are the things I would like to happen. So we could Brainstorm looking for the land first, if we don't draw a land this turn. Or we could Beanstalk and hope that that finds us a land and it just guarantees us having two Beanstalks in play. But we do want to keep making land ops if we're trying to cast this Plow Under. So I think we are going to cast the Brainstorm first. But if we miss on land here, that's going to be an obvious pain. All right, we found the land, so that's good. I don't think we're going to need two plow unders, so put one of those back. And we're not really looking for life from the loam stuff just yet either. Let's play this. We go and get ourselves. We need a white source for the white white on this. We need a green source for the green green on this. So that probably means we're getting savannah here. And then let's draw some more cards. So we're hoping to like counter spell our opponent's scary things rather than like doing removal spells but we can maybe try and do both we will have to get through this sylvan safekeeper though there is a caracas that can shut down our uro later on but that's not where the problem lies right, so this looks like a green white depth deck and our opponent is running it could still be more on the maverick side but we'll see Okay, so we want this for next turn, so we're probably just going to play this Ketria Triome and hold up our good stuff. Alright, so we're going to go and see a Thespian stage, I believe, this turn. There it is. We can't really use this Brainstorm because it's our blue card for Force of Will. Okay, so now they have the ability to make a Dark Depths. So if we plow under targeting their Lush Portico, I'm told that magic is magic online is going down this evening, and just tab me out. Great. All right, we're back in, and if they, if we plow under their two uh, lands here, we can get some work done. Um, yeah, this is kind of awkward. We're in a little bit of a bind, I'm trying to work out what we're plowing under and whatever. I don't think we need this force of will, so I think I will brainstorm here. So if we plow under their two lands, they'll just make their guy in response. And then they'll have two lands to sacrifice. Um, neither of these are really what we want right now. Uh, I think we'll put these two back. Redraw the beanstalk. So if we target these two and they make the guy, then we can try and solitude it. All right, they're doing this now, are they? That's interesting. If we'd have counterspelled this Sylvan safekeeper ages ago, we'd have been in a better spot. 
but uh, it's not the way we approach this one. So we have lots of green, so we're going to cast this, tag in these two lands. Green, green. Get some cards going. So this gives our opponent a choice here. They can sacrifice this to keep their Marit Leisure round. The other option here we had was to Solitude. But we can force of will our own plow under to draw cards after they sacrifice these two. We kind of need to draw some white cards here. Right, that's not a white card. They're letting us draw first though. Okay. Are they just going to let these go? Or are they going to start sacking them to their Marit Lage? Right, I would like to cast this, pitching this. What a weird turn this is going to be. All right, we found another white card, so we should be safe. We can also counter spell our own plow under if we feel ourselves that way inclined. I would like to kill your Marit Lage, please. Would you like to sacrifice your other land? Feels like they would. So I would like to respond with another one. What a weird stack. So this comes in. We get to kill the Marit Lage. Then we have a choice. We can either hold up this Force of Will or we can hit our Plow Under just to, turn them, to cycle them into other cards. I think we're just going to hold up the Force of Will here. I think that makes way more sense. All right, we found a line there. Found some more beanstalks too. So our opponent does have a 3-4, but we can clean it up with a plow next turn. If our opponent has a land, then they get to... Alright, it's a jury step. Okay. So they get to crash in for 4 here. A ponder. I think we'll begin with the ponder. Uh, any order shuffle. We're looking for removal spells, really. That's a removal spell. Um, so we play this. We just hard cast the solitude here and then try and hit the reclaimer and then block the sylvan safekeeper and from that point on i think we are odds on to win this one we could deck ourselves because we've already got these two beanstalks i don't even know if i want to play a third beanstalk it definitely comes with some risk and we don't have anything like a teferi to bounce them i guess we can prismatic ending our own can you prismatic ending your own stuff or is it only your opponents uh no, anything. Okay, so we could prismatic ending our own beanstalks if we end up in a weird situation later on, but that's not really what we want to do. We have already gone through two of our endings. All right, let's wait for the attack. Let's jam a solitude at our opponent. The Duke of Bog. So we're going to lose our ability to make a Merc Tide in the near future. But that's fine. And we'll get a Tundra as fine, good as anything. Probably should be diversifying our land types, actually, for the purposes of field of the dead but let's make a removal spell that is a tooth one on its own but also cantrips right, let's try and get rid of this reclaimer they will sacrifice a land we will then block you know plow our guy not today you're not and i'll get rid of a brainstorm we don't really need extra cards here maybe the brainstorm is better than the ponder actually because we can throw some stuff back but yeah like writing's on the wall there we're so far ahead Okay, so green-white depths is what our opponent looks like they're on. So how are we supposed to, like, our tools aren't amazing for this matchup, like in terms of our sideboard, but our main deck is already pretty strong. I don't mind endurance as a way of getting around potentially some of the reanimation, the, the, the regrow and stuff from the graveyard that they can do. We are going to leave the plow, plow Unders in this time. Uh, it's about time we left them in. And now is as good a time as any, I think. I would like a couple of these guys. I think I'm just going to trade a couple of ponders for them. And we'll call it a day. I think there's an argument for Surge of Extraction, but I'd rather have the Endurance. They're not like a full life from the loan deck. They maybe have a ramming up Excavator type jazz. So we're going to keep this. And we will keep the Plow Wonders in this time. First first time, I think, in the whole league that we've kept them in. All right, our opponent disconnected for a little bit there, but they are back. So we've got a game. What's our opening hand do? We've got some removal, but we don't have any way of leveraging this removal just yet. But we have the Caracas, which is excellent in this matchup. So I am willing to keep this one. So we can lead on a fetch land and then play a beanstalk. And when we do find a white card, we're going to have a lovely time. We need to not get Sylvan Safekeeper too hard. As a depth enthusiast myself, I've never been overly impressed with the Sylvan Safekeeper in the last sort of year or so I'd say I maybe like ever since Bowmasters definitely felt bad 
Like, X1 creatures aren't in a great spot. And it also depends on the deck. I think the deck our opponent's playing is way better at playing Sylvan Safekeeper than a lot of the decks I like to play because they tend to have more excess lands. They've probably got things like Flagstones that they're going to be sacrificing and stuff like that. They've also got more creatures they want to protect, so it's not just, like, the Merit Ladies. They can't just run a Knot of this world and just live with that. They want to protect their knights and things too. Gadok Teague. Okay, that's fine. So if we go and get a Hedge Maze at end step, that's pretty good for us. So let's do some surveilling. Big fan of surveil, fan, surveil lands. Let's see. Hedge Maze, what have you got for us? An Uro. You belong in the graveyard, so there you go. We'll get to you later. A Ponder. I would rather play this Beanstalk this turn and be mana efficient. And then next turn, we can do some other stuff. We also have the Caracas, so we can bounce the Teague whenever we want. All right. We also have a Solitude now that the so it, it will replace the card that we pitched to it that's pretty nice okay the wasteland is going to hit our caracas yep there it goes i don't think we're burning a solitude on the gadok teague this also tells us that our opponent is on a green sun zenith, zenith package most likely if they're playing the gadok teague so they probably are pretty stock green white depth list and green white depth is very well positioned at the moment it smashes the scout and delver pretty handily a lot of the time so not the easiest thing to play as a deck, but um, we've hit a land, so I'm just gonna go and get a Tundra, deploy another Beanstalk, and just let the cards continue to flow. It's gonna be pretty hard to lose a matchup where we're trading one for one and stuff if we've got two Beanstalks. So we can Solitude down this T to then Force of Will something, and our opponent might not see that coming. So he might play something really crucial this turn that we can then Force of Will. And we'll be gaining cards along the way. Which is pretty good. Am I in the market for killing this right now? I think so. We didn't find a land, which is a bit of a shame. But maybe we'll be drawing one soon. Right, let's get rid of this Teague. It just unlocks these Force of Wills in our hand. We can ponder for a land if we want to. If we find the land, we can then Beanstalk. I don't really want to Brainstorm here because... Our hand is kind of doing the things we want to do. We've got blue cards to pitch to our forces. We've got an Uro that we can try and win the game with soon as well. We can always pitch that to a force too. Feels like we are very far ahead here. Like we're, already, we're already doing the thing that our deck does, right? We're drawing all the cards, killing all the creatures. What is this? Neither Reliquary. We'll say no to this one and draw some more cards. Supreme Verdict. That's pretty good here. Endurance is fine, potentially. Yeah, another land. We did not draw another land. That's interesting. Okay, so I would like to cast this this Ponder, please. None of those are land. Well, actually, Lauren Revealed is a land, isn't it? So if we just put these on the bottom and take the Lauren Revealed, and we can cycle this, go and get ourselves probably... Like, we need the second green for our Endurance, so it's probably going to be a trop here. It means we don't have access to a plow this turn cycle, but it means we do have endurance for next turn cycle. Or potentially a array. But we've got a force of will that we can rely on. We've got a supreme verdict if they play a bunch of guys. If they do nothing, that's also fine. They might have their own endurance here. Ketria Triome. I'll play this out. We don't really need to do anything. I don't even want to play this Beanstalk necessarily. What's our opponent up to here? An endurance. This is going to take out our Uro, but that's fine. We've got another one in hand. We can clean this up in a second if we need to. We can play our own Endurance and bounce them in combat. Force of Vigor blowing up our Beanstalks. Um, no. I would like to keep my Beanstalks, please. I would like lots of cards. And we have a plow for this that we can fire off if that's what we want to do. I'm happy just to take the three here and then play the Uro next turn, holding up a plow. See if we get some some use out of our Supreme Verdict. If we can clean up two creatures with it, that'd be nice. Ideally, something like a Sylvan Safekeeper would be pretty tasty. Yep, I'll happily take this little bit of damage. Now, this is the sort of matchup we want with a deck like ours, where we can just trade one for one removal and just keep gassing back up. Our opponent also pitched two cards for the Force of Vigor. 
As long as we maintain an answer to Merit Lady, we should be fine. What is this? Green Sun Zenith, where x equals 2. I'm going to allow this and then try and Supreme Verdict to clean up. We will need a white source off of our Flood Strand to do so, but that should be fine. An Outland Liberator. Okay, so we're going to get a 2 for 1 off of our Wrath. So we would like another white source. We've got quite a lot of green here, so I think I'm just going to go and get a Tundra here. So white, white, blue, any other colour. Ashes down. And we've still got six cards in hand, so our opponent's two. We've got a win condition. Yeah, our opponent sees a writing on the wall when they've scooped it up. So that is the end of the league, and that is a pretty tasty 4-1 finish. We only lost to the, I think it was the Lands matchup again uh, that we lost to, but we did beat the Lands matchup before. So, you know, it's one of those things where we were pretty close. We just needed to fade one turn, and we didn't really. So, pretty happy with how the deck performed. Let's talk about it. So, the obvious elephant in the room here is Plowunder. Now, this card did do something for us in that final round, but it's not really the sort of same power level, and it's not really complementing what we're doing here, I wouldn't say. Like, don't get me wrong, Plowunder is quite a powerful thing you can do, but you kind of need the board to be in a certain position where your opponent not having two lands is going to be good, and I'd rather have more cards to have us in a position where we can kind of be stable, whereas this is a card that's good from stability, if that makes sense. So I'd rather just have, like, one more Solitude and, like, a main deck Force of Negation, perhaps, or another Merc Tide. Something along those sorts of lines would be kind of how I'd be thinking with these. But definitely another Solitude. This card is just great. I think this is much better than Triumph of St. Catherine that a lot of people are playing in Control decks. I think if you're playing Control deck, you want your things to do two things. Like, we've already got one big threat in Merc Tide, which is cheap. We play it when we want to. And it has synergy with our Beanstalk. And it's blue to pitch to Force of Blood. So this kind of covers a lot of bases. I don't think you just need another big body in Triumph of St. Catherine. So you have Solitude, which is a removal spell. You have Uro, which is a card advantage engine. And as well, and as well, it gains you a bunch of life. So it keeps you stable and healthy. So I think that's probably better. You could also turn one of these into another Lorien Reveal. That would also be fine too. The Field of the Dead thing did come up. I think that's a perfectly fine way to play this. I think... With this deck, you could maybe even think about trimming the Tundra for another Surveil Land, because we definitely went for Surveil Lands a fair bit, but you don't want to have too few white sources to fetch, because it's our removal colour that we're sometimes going to need to fetching in sort of tight constraints. That's something to think about there. But yeah, this, this deck is fine. Is it the optimal Bant Control deck list? No, but it's still pretty fun. And aside from these two cards, we're just playing like a bunch of good stuff. And because we've got the three basics in our deck, it does mean that we can play a little bit better against some of these bug beanstalk decks, which sort of crush the five color and four color um, beanstalk decks quite hard. But we, we, you know, we've got game against that more so, I think, than the four color and five color builds. I'm not sure I would necessarily like to play that matchup very often, but it's certainly something that we have tools where we can win. Sideboard wise, we never really got to use the paradox zone, which is a shame. But the rest of the tools, you know, well, I guess we didn't use the Damping Sphere or the Effing Science. We didn't play against those matchups. We played against a lot of land style matchups. You know, we played against two lands decks and a depth deck, which kind of shows you where that deck is in the meta right now. It's definitely in an ascendancy because it's so good against the, the top deck of like Blue Black Scan. So I'd expect to see more people play in these green white decks moving forward. But yeah, as for this one, this was a fun donation deck. So thank you to the donor who submitted this one. And if you would like a donation deck, by all means, get in touch with me. Or you can just become a member of my Patreon. On the highest tier, you get one every month for the channel. Or you can just enter as low as like $2 a month. And that puts you into a prize draw every month where you could get a donation deck anyway. And it supports the channel. So if that's a thing you're interested in, by all means, have a look. But otherwise, just, you know, keep watching my content. I really appreciate it. And I've also just noticed we have three swords here. So yeah, one of these should be a sword. One of these should be a solitude. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Remember to like and subscribe as well. That doesn't cost you anything, and it's the easiest way to support my channel, aside from watching, obviously. And yeah, goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths, as well as three tiers of support. A low-cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month, as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above, as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel.
If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.